we're going to start in on the background. We're, we're going to be painting from the back to the front, and we've got some nice nebula background here. And the way we started, I did kind of a, of a, of a grizzle, I think is what the appropriate term is. Um, so we used a complementary color on the background. We, we started it in acrylics. And the the nebula has has two two colors to it. Let me let me pop up the image there. There we go. This is the image up above of my of the little painting I just pulled off there. In oils, I've got got my oils uh, pulled out. So we will be messing around Bob Ross style. Although I'm not just want to get get a nice little thin surface on the uh, on the painting here just a little bit and I'm gonna start with my mid-tone I'm gonna grab a little bit of my a little bit of my liquid just a touch here I'm gonna get this on in there and uh, let's see if I can't um, okay that was good to know But yeah, when I when I do paint with oils, I've got a fan on behind me. So if that gets a little annoying, let me know. Let me pull this. I forget what the line from uh, Lower Decks was. But he, <laughs> we've got Riker on the bridge, and he he keeps making musical uh, musical comments about everything, as if everyone else knows what jazz tr trombone is. If, if you're if you're a, a much of a Star Trek fan at all, Lower Decks has been a real joy. Let me tell you. Okay. This on here, it's kind of on the edge. We're, we're a painter on the edge. Yeah, there we go. But yeah, the fan behind me, if you hear it, I keep to keep starting this. Uh, it's for the fumes. This this really smells like. Um, it reminds me of of the testers model paint we used to use when we were younger. Very, But uh, I, I think a lot of it too is is it, there. There's a practice thing to it. I I found that I was practicing art more than practicing music. So for me, it, it it's kind of where my brain uh, settled in effectively. Hey, you're curious. Is there a reason you paint relatively flat as opposed to more vertical? Um, good question. I actually. I, I I actually was all, almost set up to paint vertical, very Bob Ross style, but um, there's a practical consideration in my in my space here, is that it's it's pretty tricky to get the camera set up for that. So I, I was working on it a little earlier today, and I just decided, you know what, I, I'm just not gonna I'm just not gonna go there. So. Jumpy. It was most mostly I can't. It, it was mostly I I, I was lazy. <laughs> I was I was lazy, and I didn't want to didn't want to deal with the um didn't want to deal with the the camera setup. Isn't that terrible? It's the worst reason. <laughs> but yeah, I I'm actually it it's it's kind of um. It is kind of bugging me a little bit because I'm looking at this gigantic to me canvas at a very harsh angle and uh, it's not uh, it's not pleasant okay again this is kind of my dark to mid tone that I'm painting down here so with luck we'll have some nice uh, nice effects once I get the rest of space in a little late there and again I, I keep grabbing my little photo reference that kind of gives me an idea of what I'm dealing with. So we'll we'll see if we can't brighten this up just a bit. And I'm gonna do this slowly. You know, you, usually on my on my paintings, I, I'm racing to get it done, start to finish in one night. So that's kind of the fun part about the slower one here. We're gonna we're gonna take our time on this one. I'm going to trust where I painted white underneath all of this and s say that that's the background. <laughs> you know? 
All righty. I, I know I'm sitting here. I'm actually trying to paint basically a um, a 1990s era digital background for the the opening of Star Trek Voyager, which is seems to be a very strange thing to strange thing to tackle, to be honest with you. But uh, it's exciting. We'll keep it fun. <laughs> yeah, we'll adjust the screen a little bit. We're gonna. We're going to get some nebula in here, and we're, again, going slow. I'm getting my orange here. Let's see if we can't uh, can't give this a little life here a little bit. There we go. Adding a little bit more of my liquids. I don't really quite have enough there. There we go. Okay. Yeah, DS9 was definitely definitely ahead of its time, not just for Star Trek, but for TV in general. It was uh, just before everyone started going to long format, long storylines. Well, of course, except for Babylon 5. We, we, won't, we won't talk about that, right? No. <laughs> yeah, Babylon 5 was, uh, was really cool. It, it's regrettable that Babylon 5 came out kind of just as my, my college experience was starting to get pretty... Uh, pretty intense, so I, I didn't see it all on the first run, unfortunately. That was one I caught later. But uh it, it did seem it did seem a little convenient that Star Trek came out with a show based entirely on a space station with all the aliens and such. Around the time Babylon 5 was uh pulling its stuff together. I, yeah. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with it. Yeah, well, you know. We'll see. Is Babylon 5 worth a rewatch? Um, I, I honestly think that Babylon 5 is definitely worth a rewatch. Yes, I'm, uh, I did come back and catch it a little bit later. And I, I do think that that is an excellent show. Babylon 5 was definitely, definitely worth the effort. I, I would I, I would give that a I, I'd give the crystal gives that a thumbs up for sure yeah a little bit out here okay Amiga graphics <laughs> yes on Babylon 5 I, I I will say this yeah the the graphics are a little interesting um so just remember they were doing the best they could with what they had it's uh you know the ships are cool, but yeah, it looks a little it, it it looks a little new tech toaster. Okay, got a little bit of a little bit of orange highlights in. I'm gonna see if I can't get these blended in just a little bit. There we go. I want to kind of hide the brush strokes a little bit here, which you know honestly, oil is so good at that. <laughs> If you want to do really fun space nebulas, folks, get yourself some oils. Absolutely. Get yourself some oils and some liquid and uh, have yourself a field day. I mean, it's it's basically ready for it. <laughs> I, I, I treat space nebulas the same way I treat, you know, clouds and landscapes, which is why, you know, oils are really good for that sort of thing. I'm still better bitter about having to learn cursive. Oh, but you'll you'll write the better business cards. You know, you'll 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 write the thank you notes for your business. It'll it'll be good. Alrighty. It's kind of going in. This is sort of the hot spot of the nebula, so I kinda wanna get in here. Maybe I'll just go straight yellow. Yeah, we'll just go some straight yellow. It's really transparent. We'll get some of that in there. Want some yellow. But yeah, poor Mr. Levine. Oh my gosh. Yep. <laughs> he had to deal with me. <laughs> so yeah, I, pr I promised if I if I ever ran into into anyone like that, if I if I ever got back for any of the you know reunion things that happened, I I, I would give him a I'd give him a personal apology and let him laugh at that particular story. That was funny. <laughs> yeah. 
Because really, I was being a terrible student. I was really being just ridiculous. Need just a little bit of red, red in there. Oh my gosh, yes. Oh, happy nebulas. Happy nebulas. Oh yeah. All right, well, we're gonna get a little happy little nebula hot spot going here. Got a little touch of my titanium white. We're gonna try to get that in there because that's where the hot spot is. It kind of it's it, look, folks. It's almost starting to look like a nebula. Let me let me kill this thing. There we go. Sounded familiar. Yes. Look, it's it it it's almost becoming a nebula. I know I got a little glare going on, but we'll make that. That's okay. We'll we'll make this work. There we go. The the nebula had a lot of red reds and oranges, and the reds had a tendency to go to purple, which is why I had the uh, had the purple in there, and and of course there were some nice deep. Whoop, had too much white on there. Sorry, folks. All right, so I'm gonna get in some blues here. And I'm trying gonna I'm gonna try to follow. It's kind of like where it's the most orange is really where we need to go here. It almost doesn't look. Excuse me, sorry. I, it it almost doesn't my 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 blue almost doesn't look um, purple enough. But I'm gonna go with it. I, I'm gonna go with it, and we're gonna see. How this works here. Just out of curiosity, what happens when I bring that on in? Oh yeah. There we go there. Grab a little bit of my lighter blue. Okay, this needs to be orange down in here, so I, I have to not go in any further there. I see. Okay. Alright, I'm following it now. And then this guy goes down there. Uh okay. Sorry, I got lost for a moment, and there's a little bit of little bit of purple in there, so I'm gonna grab just a touch of that. Is there a little bit up there? Yeah, there's a little bit over there too. Okay, we're gonna do there. It's really brightest up here, and then it kind of it kind of tapers down. It's almost completely black down here. I'm going to set my brush down, and now we get to Bob Ross this up a little bit. Now I, I got some blotchy colors in here, and I'm just going to keep my, my reference handy. Let me see if I can't... Uh, let me see if we can get some, get some streaky action going here. And yes, we can. This is the crazy plan all along. My brush is a little stiff, so it's it's really going aggressive on this, but that's okay. As long as we get get as long as we get things covered, I don't mind. So we'll be doing we'll be doing we'll be going back later and doing some some dark and light passes anyway. I just want to make sure I get my tones in. And, and my mid-tone is actually pretty bright blue-wise, so I'll get a little bit more down here before I go too far. Got some darks. There we go. I, I gotta admit that blue is just like, boom! It's like popping off the page. I, I'm very happy I did the underpainting. I have to be honest with you. I wasn't sure how that, was gonna, how that would go, but... Uh, in particular, down here in the blue, in the oranges and blues, it's really working. <laughs> so I'm happy. It's the effect I was looking for. That's that's the good part. All right, now let me see if I can't paint in some of my some of the dark zones here. Oh, do, do, do. Okay, 
There we go. Set that on down. Time for another pass with our very happy two inch, probably way too, way too bristly brush. trying to pay attention to the direction here so we have streaks that emanate from the center of our nebula more than anything else Just a little bit there, okay. And, and yeah, that blue that that blue that I chose as my midtone is actually pretty bright. And I'm just trying to use this darker paint to kind of get a, a sense of where the there we are. There's some where where the dark spots are here, and I, I again I'll I'll probably do another blend of this just to. Just to see. Oh, there's a dark cloud like right up in here. Hey, fortunately, I'm using the same dark for both both colors, so I can I can cross the lines. There's one there too. Oh, cool. Okay, yeah, we're getting there. So we're kind of we're straddling the line here a little bit. There's one up there. Although I'm gonna have some blue in on that, which is a little regrettable. And maybe a little bit. In the prints, <laughs> it'll be a it'll be a limited run uh, print of the uh, of this very painting. So yeah, keep your eyes open. I will. We'll do details on that later. But this is this will be bigger than any print I'm doing right now. So yeah, most of the prints I've done were 16 inches by 20, and this is like 24 by 36. So it, it's up there. But uh, you know, plus a uh, plus the edge and everything. So all right, I do a little. A little fun blending here just to see if I can't pull this on in nicen up some of this stuff I'm not gonna touch I'm not gonna touch the ones in the red yet because you know I don't want to I don't want to cross contaminate it While this is still kind of wet on here, I want some. I want to pull out like I did with the above section. I want to get some highlights pulled out here, and um, and we might after that we might be calling it. I don't really feel like I could do the planet any justice today because I'm uh, I've prepped for the nebula, but not the planet. So yeah. Trying to get some some bright spots in here. Little touch of purple in there. Oh, it feathers so nicely. Meeting's over. Meeting's done. All right. Everyone break out the beers. Right? Is that how that goes? Okay, that was that was just Microsoft. Sorry. <laughs> you know. Just working in a little magenta in here, just to get a little change there. Oh, we need more than that. Awesome. Cool. I'm just gonna I'm gonna keep fiddling. I'm gonna keep fiddling with this thing. So yeah. <laughs> All 
Alrighty. Just trying to soften some of this up here, because this is supposed to be, you know, the the nebula. The the nebulous nebula. From the redundant department of redundancy department. That's another. This has been fun. It's a uh, it's a nice way to kind of kind of break your mind up if you if you do painting. I I, I got it. I gotta admit, doing a large canvas like this it ma makes a makes a difference. Um, a lot of people think you know, hey, I, I'm just gonna start small when I'm when I'm starting to paint, but um, I, I, honestly, it's you kind of have more more room to play with a larger painting. I, I guess it's the best way I could put it. it. You get a little more room to me mess with details like this and, and finessing. And um, I, I, there's a scale factor at work with the brushes and paints at a, at a smaller painting scale than this. The paint just doesn't do the same things. And I don't know what the technical term for that is, but there's a there, it, it gets into fluid dynamics and um, and some other issues. It's just it's it's better suited sometimes for a larger surface. Oh, I picked up some paint and look at that. Well, it's okay. We got a neat, we have a neat little happy accident with our with our cloud here. And we'll do a few more of those. Why not? Right. <laughs> there we go good times I'm finding some spots where there's definitely some orange that I'm hoping to fill back in with some some of my mid-tone blue there Folks, if you if you're just following, you just come to the end. Sorry, we're just uh, we're closing it down. But uh, go ahead and hit the follow button, and uh, if you want to tag along, you can catch me as Blackbird CD on Twitter, Instagram, and Space Art by Christopher Dahl over on Facebook. Alrighty, I'm gonna check out here tonight, and we will catch you all Wednesday evening. Thank you so much. Who who should I who should I? And that was part two of my Star Trek Voyager live stream painting. It's been an exploration of a longer format painting, which is a little different than what I usually do on my Wednesday night live streams. Usually on those, I just go start to finish on one painting. This one, I've been breaking it up into longer sections so we can get a little more detail, a larger painting, something a little bit more exciting. I have part three currently underway in my editing bay, and I'll have that posted as soon as it's finished. But thank you all for watching so far. I hope you're enjoying the journey, and I will catch you next time. Take care. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, be sure to hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified when I upload a new video. Also, catch my weekly stream over on Twitch every Wednesday night at 6pm. Thank you.